This is Cindy Harrison from the Paint With Heart Studios here in New Hampshire. And I'm your host and artist of Paint With Heart. So thank you all for coming. Thank you for watching on replay. If you're watching on the replay, more importantly, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Also, um, click the little bell after you subscribe to be notified when I go live or when I add another uh, video. Also, please, important, share. Share my YouTube videos with everybody and also comment on them. More than three words, it has to be a minimum of four. The algorithm doesn't, doesn't acknowledge, I love it or like it. They only acknowledge, hey, this is really great you know, information, thank you for sharing, or you, know, you did it again, you did it again, <laughs> again, right? So four words or more, and um, the algorithm will bump it up, so then I'll be sub sub um, suggested to other people watching YouTube channel, other people's YouTube channels. So um, thank you for bearing with me and listening through this, those who are here, because they've heard it all before. But again, repetition, right? It's not a bad thing. And today we're going to be painting an angel. I call it Send Me an Angel, which is a title of a song from, I believe, the Scorpions. So, and no further ado, I am going to say, let's get on with the painting. Okay, so here we have my canvas. And that is, I'm, I'm doing it on, an, an, on canvas. My original is done on a composition notebook. So this is a composition notebook that... I picked up, you know, it's not expensive. It's your traditional notebook, the black and white one that I picked up. What we're gonna do is first you sand it to give it some grit. I put masking tape over the binding because I wanted to keep the binding black. And then I went over it with two white gesso, premium deco art Americana premium medium white gesso. And I did two coats of that. And then I did one coat of Blue Haven. So that's what we got started with. Now, when you're doing that, just so you know, I would suggest you take your piece of paper towel and put it underneath your front cover. This way here, any paint, gesso, or anything that goes over the edge won't adhere to your paper and stick your paper. So definitely you want to keep that safe from, from that. Okay, now I have my one coat of Blue Haven. Now what do we do? Well, I wanted to make this ethereal look and I ended up taking some glazing medium and what I'm going to do is put the glazing medium in my container. And I'm going to mix some water with it. So I, I dilute it. And I have a palette knife here somewhere. I put a little too much water, but I'll deal with it. Okay. So now, And I got this um, technique, by the way, from Lydia Steves in Canada. She is an awesome painter of animals. She does dogs and cats and, and other animals that are just, just to die for. So if you um, can find her on Facebook, and she's an awesome painter. So I'm going to um, take this, take this, and I'm going to, it's, um, by the way, blue shop towel. It's a blue shop towel because these are uh, less likely to have lint. You know, it's like a reduced lint factor. And I want a flat surface. And then I'm going to also put out, uh, put out some Blue Harbor on your palette. And then I'm going to put out some midnight, deep midnight blue. And 
gonna put out some Payne's Gray. Now, if you want to, just in case, you can put out a little bit more of your Blue Haven. Okay, so I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna dip it and soak it into my um, glazing medium mix, okay? So I got that soaked into my glazing medium mix and I'm going to go into the blue harbor and get that really saturated. And now I'm going to go over to my piece and I'm gonna to start to rub it on my piece. You don't have to cover all of it. You can soften some of your edges. Kind of get it over everything. Next, I'm going to pick up a little bit more of my glaze mix and pick up the Deep Midnight Blue. And then continue on adding some of that. And I tip my, my tip it and get to the areas that have less paint on it sometimes to soften those edges. And because I'm on a canvas, I'm going to take my color and I'm going to go on my edges while I'm here. because it'll look weird if I do it after the fact. Hold on one second. Okay. Okay. So then, with a little bit more of the medium, I'm going to pick up just a tad bit of the Payne's Gray. And I'm going to add that. I'm going to try and keep this one to the out edges, but no guarantees. I get a little bit on the inside. bit in there and you'll notice once it starts drying if you put another layer over top it will drag it'll start lifting so you don't want to work it too too much I'm gonna dry that I'm gonna throw this away and get a new one so if you have some harsh lines that you don't particularly care for and it's not gonna be covered by our angel like the ones I have on the edge here seem to be a little bit on the harsh side. What you can do is pick up some, saturate your towel again with the glazing medium mix. And <clears throat> you can go back in with your base color. And you can kind of try and soften some of those areas. I kind of like, I'm going to go back to the second one, the Blue Harbor. And kind of put that one back in here. I like that color. Work my way back up. It's all layers, just layers, a little, little of the mix. And just layer that up. It 
So until you get this ethereal looking design that you like. And we're done with the glazing. Once this is dry, then you can um, trace on your design and then we'll move forward. So funny, not that you can tell, but in, in person, when I look at this, it looks like denim because the canvas texture is coming through. So it to me looks like denim. See all this stuff behind here? If you're dry, you're gonna take water on a clean brush and just water her wherever you painted okay you're gonna just water her down and you can make her a little drippy you don't want it to be drippy very dry you want it to be very moist okay whatever you painted that's what you want wet and then you're gonna take your fan brush with some water in it and I'm going to dip it into some of the blue haven and, and then I'm going to tap it with the handle of my other brush make sure there's nothing around that you want to keep free of dots because these dots will travel so you go around her and again if you you're gonna get it on her so if you pre-wet you can wash them right off of her. And then wash your brush out and pick up the next color. And let's go right over to the Payne's Gray. Make sure while it's still wet, go in and wash off so you don't have to rebase what you just did. And then lastly, I'm going to pick up that white. The more water, the bigger the dots. Mm. And they do go everywhere, so. And the next thing I did was to do some dripping. And the dripping, you pick up water on your brush. You can um, have it very loose. And then I hold it up on an angle. And let it, that drip down. <clears throat> you can start at different heights. More water, less paint. And you can even add some white on top of the color that you just put on there. You might want to have a piece of paper towel at the bottom to catch your thoughts. So you can put them wherever you feel you need Switch those dots with that and make sure you go back and wipe off any that went over her hand, or her leg, her feet. If you lie her flat, then you can wipe that off and it won't go back over those areas. See? Easy peasy. We did it. We can dry this and then go back to the base room. Okay, so now what we're going to do is now going to be a lot of base coating. Her body parts are base coated with, and I still have an old bottle, it's called Flesh Tone. Now it's called Warm Beige. Same color. I'm going to do her hair in golden straw. 
I'm going to do her wings in dove gray. And I'm going to stop there. So body parts, flesh tone, a warm beige, hair, golden straw, and wings, dove gray. Let's do her, her face and um, her body because it's easy and yet seems to be like one of those intimidating things to do. I did not give her eyes and nose and mouth. If you want to go that far, you go for it. I'm going to do burnt sienna. And we're going to do a little bit of shading. Now, pre-wet as needed. If you need to pre-wet, it all uh, obviously will help you in softening your floats of color. I'm going to go under her hairline. And then I'm going to go under her chin. So I'm on her neck under her chin. If you have too much water, it'll bleed out. So you want to make sure you don't have too much. Mop if you need to. Then I'm going to go underneath her sleeves on both sides. And I'm gonna go right now to the bottom of her feet, pretty wet. If you wanna go up the legs, you can. I'm gonna go bottom of the feet, and then you can bring it up the back side of her leg and bottom of her thigh. the inside of this leg. Foot. If these are dry, we're going to go to the left side where her ponytail is, and then the bottom of inside or bottom of her arms. On her face and her, um, her, I don't know what you call this part, forearm, on that forearm, I'm going to add a little highlight of white. This is a C stroke. And then going to on the chisel with the white on the left side, pull the stroke right and then turn it over. I'm pulling the stroke from the wrist to the elbow using the white corner against the wrist to start with. Makes sense? You can add a little cup of it in her hand if you want. Let's do the top of the feet. I think that looks good. You can pick up the white and you can start basing in her dress. I 
I'm not doing the overlay, I'm just doing the underdress. So you want it as solid as you can get it. When I do the dress, if you have your line drawing on there, that's great. If not, I kind of just went by the width of my brush and the width was one length, one, another length, a different length. So I kind of did that, making it with her knee up. I envisioned that this length was going to be a little uh, shorter and bring it up over her knee. Oh boy. And then this length, they had a little longer. It's okay. Deep, deep breaths. It'll be good. And then we can bring this one up a little higher. If you want. Or, you know what? We can just keep going a little longer, a little longer. It's going to be different because I'm just winging it here. I'm going to bring it over that way. This one way down. And if you leave ridges, that, that looks cool too. See? So, I don't know. So, you kind of see her legs through it, but it's not terribly showing her everything. Make it more solid at the top. And then it kind of gets thinner as it goes down. So I lift my brush off the surface. I'm going to take out some sunny day in true ochres. Okay, I'm going to take my 10 out liner brush and I'm going to pick up some of the light yellow color. And I'm going to try to imagine where the highlights are going to be. I'm going to do the bangs or the part up here from the part in the middle of her head. Then it goes, follow that line right to the edge. You're going to go out from the edge, follow that line up to her bangs, and then start to. Next, I'm going to do just a couple, but on the outside, not near her face, but on the outside here in the center. Just a couple. I'm not going up as far as the bangs or as low as her neck. So you're going to keep that in the center. On this part that comes around, I'm going to start long and get narrow, 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 narrow. Can you tell that in the Okay. 
And then I'm going to add a little bit on this curve down here. So it's longer on the right and it gets shorter as it goes towards the left. This is longer on the left and gets shorter as it goes to the right. Next, I'm going to take a little bit of water and dilute the true ochre. And I'm going to start putting that <clears throat> right under the bang area that swoops down and against her face and then up from her neck. And they're short lines, so they're hardly noticeable. If you want to bring a few in from the side or down from the part, you can do that as well. Turn this around. Bring it, you can do down the back here. And then I'm going to go up from the, go up from the tip here a little bit. I'm going to go in the middle between the um, white and bring it some from her back. Now, if you need to blend that more, you can go back with your base color and put that between the two colors and I zigzag that through. I'm going to move on to her wing. We're going to take on the wing, we're going to take neutral gray and we're going to outline these areas. If you need to um, put the pattern back on, make sure you're dry first. I'm going to just kind of, no pun intended, wing it. And you can use your 10 out liner to loop the paint with some water. Then we need to draw on the outside here. So try to keep it parallel. It's going to be thinner up there and thicker down here. If you're afraid you got too thick, just go back in with a clean brush and wash it away. I'm going to show you how to do the, um, let's do the inside here, not worry about the outside wing part, but the inside different sections so that we can do her um, cape and a little bit of this. So we're going to, if I show you how to do that, you'll know how to do the rest. I'm going to take my number 12 flat and with some of that um, you can pre-wet if you want I'm going to side load I'm going to go against her neck so I'm working on the right side of her wing but the paint is on the left side of my brush and every line that I created I'm going to shade 
on the right side of the line. That makes sense. I'm using the neutral gray that we shaded with. I'm going to shade around her as well. So on the right side of her, I'm always going to be on the right side of each line that I just drew on there. And then on the left side of her, I'm going to be on the left side of the line. So stick it in her neck and then come away on the left side of that each line that you drew. You're starting against her body, her clothes, and then you're going to finish off by staying to the left of each line. When that's dry, you can go down the side of her. I make it fairly dark because I'm going to do that chiffon overlay, so I want it to show up. When that's all done, and you're going to keep doing all the other ones, but for time, I'm going to just do this much. Now I'm going to take some white. And if these are dry, I should make sure with a blow dryer. I'm going to take some white and I'm going to do the opposite of what I did. If I'm on the right side, the paint is going to be on the right and I'm going to stay to the left of the line that I drew. So the highlight color is going away from her body and the shade is going toward her body. The opposite goes for this side. I'm going to put some detail on her well, top of her dress, and I'm going to use the Blue Harbor. and my 10 aught liner brush to put that ribbon, that empire waistband right there. And then I'm also going to add bands on the end of her sleeves. and her neckline. I'm not going to do the big bow yet. I'm going to take that same brush and I'm going to add dots to her outfit, to her top part. You can do it with uh, the brush or you can do it with a stylus. As many or as few as you like. And then I'm gonna take my number 12 flat with some of that color loaded on the corner of the brush get most of it out, wipe it on your paper towel if you need to. And I'm gonna make sure those are dry and I'm gonna just put some against the ponytail on the left side and then I'm gonna put it from the top of her shoulder down um, to outline that sleeve here. I'm going to do it on her bodice, not on the sleeve on, on this side. Her sleeve doesn't have, we're going to put a little bit up here on the top of that sleeve, but the color is going to be on the bodice to the left of the sleeve. I'm 
I'm going to take my 10 knot liner with some of that Blue Harbor and I make little dark make little dark lines there. It doesn't mine doesn't look like it shows up very much, so I'm going to add some more. My paint up in that against her shoulder, bring it down to that side of her body. With the same brush, same load, load it on the corner of your brush. I'm going to chisel some darts in the rest of her flowing of her dress. So on the chisel, with the paint up against her empire waist and drag it down and let it run off. You see that? And I'm gonna do the same on the bottom where the sections are and on the outside. You want to do little lines, make them come up from the bottom, but do them all different um, lengths. Don't do them all the same length. Now the back of her dress comes lower. She has a high-low dress. So the back of her dress actually comes lower back here. So I did do another row of pulling up my flat pulling up my flat at different lengths um, with the white. And then you can add the blue to that as well. So once this is dry, we can do our chiffon overlay. And the trick of it is that you want a dry piece of paper towel because you want to take your, watered, your watery brush, put it into some white, but you want to wipe it off. You don't want a lot of water in there. So when you come over, like I'm gonna go start at her neck here and I'm gonna wrinkle that near her neck and then bring it down over. Obviously I dried out too much. Bring it down over her sleeve, beyond her sleeve. Watery paint, take out most of it on the paper towel. Be consistent. Wiggle, wiggle, go around her um, ponytail. Bring it. It's going to be beyond her sleeve. Down. And I made it come right above that belt. And don't make it, um, make it kind of a jagged edge so it's not a straight edge. Once that's done, the, the rest of this is the same way. It's going to start on top. You're going to go over the top, but beyond, beyond the edge. So I went over the whole, I did not go over the band, but I went over all of this that's here with a wash of the white. When you get to the outside edge, get rid of most of that, when you get to this outside edge, you can bring it out beyond and then 
little jag is not big jagging, but little jagging. You try not to go over the inside of your dress. But it's okay if you do, you can go back. You want that to be lighter. This part here, it's okay to have that be more white, but the outside you want lighter. Go over this side and bring it down. Bring it out. More water, less paint. This is the back side I'm doing right now. The front side is going to come kind of over half her foot and then up. Half her foot, hard to see. Now, how this is going to show up is if you take your one round and you pick up some of that white, this is when it'll pop for you. And you take the straight white and then you start adding little hit or misses to the bottom of that chiffon. And then you can start seeing, oops, not up there. Start seeing that edge. If you bring it down. Again, it's a wiggle, 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 hit or miss. You can bring some of the, if you want it to look like it's gathered, bring some lines up. You can even add a little bit more white to the bottom of the actual dress itself, if you want. To see how that's working. I'm gonna go up here and do it up here, a little bit on the edge. So now that that shows up, I'm going to do some up at her neckline. Then we can do some lines. Up and some lines down. And then I'm going to give her some shading with that blue harbor. Just underneath that ridge up here. Oh, I took the Payne's gray on the corner of my brush and I went with a side load or pre-wet if you need to and I did under her, under her feet. And under that main part of her dress. So if you wanna do this before you wash over it. On the bottom one, I did the Blue Harbor. From the back solid part of her dress to the chiffon, that's the one that I put a little Blue Harbor underneath. If you want some areas to show up a little bit more in contrast, you can add more white to some of that area, more of a side load. And that will bring, I wouldn't do it to all the areas, but some of the areas might be able to stand a little punching up. Okay. 
Gives it, makes it look a little bit more solid than this is chiffon. If your wash is very light, dries, and the blue dries really solid, you can go back and add more. I'm going to dry that and then show you the ribbon. Okay. I'm going to go back to my number one. <clears throat> if you want, I think you can go even with a number of four if you wanted to, but I'm going to stick with my number one. I'm going to do the Blue Harbor first. And I'll put this back in just in case it got a little bit white. And then I'm going to just, and I freehand it. I'm going to put the brush down and I'm going to wiggle and trail off. So from the center, flatten that out, wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. A little bit of moisture helps. Wiggle, 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 and trail off. I'll come over this side. Flatten out, wiggle, 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 wiggle. And trail off. Before I do the bow, I want to um, highlight and shade this. So the shade is Payne's Gray. And I'm going to start by bringing some lines in from the waistline and then bringing it down from the bottom of the knot where the knot's going to be. And if there's a big curve, we'll put some on that curve. Some on this curve. However, the movement of your bow, uh, ribbon is going. Then for the highlight, take some of the white. And now we're going to go where we didn't put the darks. I'm going to pick up my blue harbor and I'm going to do a lazy bow and bring it back up. Daisy bow and bring it back up. And that's when you then define it by adding the darks and the lights. You can do a, you know, proper bow if you'd rather. So on the wings, The rest of it is just line work. You draw a line down the center of each section and then you draw these hash, like feather, feather lines. That's pretty self-explanatory. You can look at the photograph on the website and see that. These are dot flowers with the, uh, with the um, stylus. These little glowing balls all I did was take some white, make a dot. You want to add a little bit of the yellow on top of it. Dry that. And then with my dome, this is a number four, I take some white and I load it into my brush, wipe the excess off of my paper towel, and scrub above her hand. When that is gone, I pick up the yellow and I do the same with the yellow. So it makes it look like she's got an energy ball in her hand that she's gonna we give you some energy, which is what I need. <laughs> so 
and when you're done, you can wash that out, but do both sides at the same time on those. The scarf, basically what I did was the same thing with the flat brush, uh -huh. the 12 flat and the white. Dilute it a lot. You make a watery consistency, how, how watery this is. Maybe it's not enough water like that. And then take your paper towel and take most of it off. Mm -hmm. And then you start to figure out where it's coming from. Probably a little bit more paint. And then just kind of, I trailed it off on both sides. Okay. And then in the middle, I'm kind of thinking about where is it coming out from here? So it's going to be offset. So it's going to come more this way behind her. behind her come up and then offset that and bring it down so then what i did was when that's dry i shaded under her arm with the blue harbor against so the top layer comes over i want to shade behind it okay so on both sides of her overlay and under her arms and then i added little dashes of blue harbor right here right here again it's not translating well with this lighting but there's just a little hint just to give it a little bit of a flow. Mm -hmm. I didn't do much else to that because it's see-through. Okay. But if I come over here and I do a little bit up the back side here, under the arm, under the arm, down against what comes over the arm. I'm gonna put a little bit against the dress and then heavier, heavier on the outside. So a little bit against the solid dress and heavier on the side. You see that? And then if I did like a back to back, You get that kind of illusion that it's rolling. See how that kind of rolls now? After you do the um, I go heavy, heavy under here to separate these sections. Thank you all for joining me today. And hopefully uh, when you finish your project, take a photograph and send it to me email or on Facebook, tag me. You can put it on your Facebook page, but write my name and the name in it and and, uh, and then I'll see it for sure but um, if you're watching on YouTube please please share it subscribe it comment more than three words ring the little bell and I'll and it will pop up to let you know next time a video is uh, is posted <laughs> so until next time remember to always paint with heart Thank you. <laughs>